Okay, here we go. I've got Deej from Bungie. We're here to talk about the Destiny Alpha news that broke last night at PlayStation's E3 press conference. Welcome, Deej. Thanks for having me, Sid. Good to be here. Absolutely. So first things first, I think it's important to point out, you can head to greatnessawaits.com slash destiny and register for a chance to get into that alpha that's coming out on Thursday, actually, yep. on PS4 on exclusively. So let's get into what that alpha consists of, Deej. What, what are folks going to get? They get a very thin slice of the game. Uh, Destiny will come out uh, September 9th. Uh, between now and then, we're going to have this alpha, which helped pave the, raid to a, uh, pave the road to a public beta later on this summer. The alpha is just a sampling of the action that we're going to have in the final game. But there are many different modes that you can experience. There's a story mission. Uh, there is a strike with varying levels of difficulty, which is a cooperative scenario. You and a fire team, two of your friends, wave after wave of aliens, culminating in an epic boss battle with very, very sweet rewards. Better loot for your guardian, better armor, better weapons. Uh, then there is a uh, competitive multiplayer. Two different maps, guardian versus guardian action. Uh, you'll be fighting the most dangerous combatant in the world of Destiny, which is another living, breathing, thinking player. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, we open up the entire old Russia destination for you to explore. So you can go and you can activate side missions given to you by factions of the last safe city on Earth. Uh, adds a little bit of structure to this free roam mode of ours where you can just go wherever you think your adventure should take you. So you can spawn your personal vehicle, you can rocket across the vistas, you know, you can watch a sunset or you can battle aliens from different species, watch as they collide in public spaces and then mop up after they're done. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to play and enjoy and explore. And most importantly, it's going to be a player's first experience with creating a character. So Hunter, Titan, or Warlock, do you want to play as a male or a female? You know, do you want to be a human, an otherworldly awoken figure, or do you want to be an exo machine built for war? Uh, people can really start to express themselves creatively and then see how that, be char that character changes over time. Seems like you guys kind of thought of everything, and this is just the alpha, it's kind of stunning, but I want to zoom in for a second, talk about competitive, because you guys yeah. are actually revealing this here at PlayStation's E3 booth for the first time, hands-on. Yep. Talk a little bit about, obviously, Bungie, no stranger to competitive multiplayer expertise, frankly. What is the philosophy for Destiny's competitive mode? Uh, one of the things we want to do with the competitive mode is we want the competitive multiplayer in Destiny to be about skill because there are many different ways to upgrade your character in this game. There's going to be stronger armor, more dangerous weapons, but when you come into competitive multiplayer, everyone should be able to have the chance to win. It should be about how good are you with your controller, how well do you know the map, how tactical are you in the way you coordinate with your team. You know, if you and I are watching each other's back and controlling an objective together, we're going to do a lot better than somebody who goes in by themselves. So we didn't want competitive multiplayer to be about who had the best gear. So we level the playing field, and we really make it about who is the best warrior from the tower. Excellent. So how do the different classes, Titan, Hunter, Warlock, sure. how do the, you know, they have different sort of abilities, different supers? How yeah. does that all sort of factor into the competitive experience? Yeah, well, they're all very dangerous. So there is no one class that is weaker than another class. They're all dangerous in their own way. They all fight in different ways. And, uh, you know, these are knights on a quest who can wield the powers of the traveler. You know, they can use magic and light as a weapon. So they do that in different ways. Uh, the Titan is all about heavy armor and brute force. You know, he's got a solid punch. He can pound the ground for an area effect, ripple of, you know, disaster in every direction. Uh, the Hunter is sort of a rogue. You know, it's more of a ranged, stealthy character. Uh, he's all about, you know, he's about the blade. Um, he's got uh, a revolver that becomes bathed in flame that he can insta-kill other dudes with. Uh, and then there's my personal favorite, which is uh, the Warlock. That's our space wizard and conjure up a piece of the sun and throw it down at its enemies, you know, just sort of gliding through the air on a cloud of light. Uh, very different personalities for every fighting style, but they're all really good contributions to a new explosive sandbox. Awesome. I can't wait to play the competitive. I did get a chance to dip my toe into the alpha. There's a lot to explore. Yeah. And, and speaking of explore, that's actually one of the things that really grabbed my attention. There's, yeah. this, there's this mode, there's this concept of exploration in Destiny, and, and there's this sort of big open sandbox with seamless matchmaking. You're finding other players coming in and out. I think it was uh, PlayStation fans particularly are going to recognize the, the, uh, sort of an element of this from Journey, which is this fan favorite title that had a similar sort of seamless weave-in, weave-out co-op. 
Tell me a little bit about Explore. I think it's so fascinating. Yeah, it's something that you don't see a lot in a first-person shooter, a first-person action game like the ones that Bungie you know, have been known for over the years. So we're taking the heart-pounding action. You know, we always love to pack into our games, but we're opening it up a little bit. So instead of a campaign mission where you jump from waypoint to waypoint, you can literally just get out there in the open, and there are going to be aliens and hostile combatants in different locations in old Russia. So we've opened the entire destination to you. Uh, you can go there, set down in the landing zone. Um, at the same time as you go through and you fight these enemies to collect rewards, things that you can trade back in the tower for upgrades to your character, you're going to encounter other guardians. They may be a guardian who is on a story mission. They can be on their way to you know, the first phase of a strike. Uh, they could be doing any number of things on their own adventures. And where your adventure hits meets theirs at a crossroads, there are these public spaces. And that's where crazy things can happen. <laughs> you know, fallen capital ships can spawn into the atmosphere and overfly you, you know, dropping off drop ships. And they start mining minerals from the planet. You've got to destroy that stuff. and You've got to send them packing. And the other guardians that rush to your aid because they see that waypoint, they see that event kickoff. It's really the sort of thing that we were demonstrating last year on this stage when we were doing a worldwide gameplay reveal. Only now it's a thing that you can play. We're inviting you in. It's not about watching. It's about you really understanding what it's like to play this thing. Good stuff. I mean, my, I, I, I sort of canvassed this area in old Russia in exploration yeah. or explore. And I was, uh, I, I thought I had sort of combed every nook and cranny, and then I realized, hey, there's this whole like interstellar graveyard of, of fallen ships and airplanes and stuff. Yeah. And it was this gigantic other area of the game. I mean, the, the game seems just so dynamic. Seems like there's a lot of nooks and crannies. Well, and the landscape tells a story of its own. You know, old Russia is a place where humanity was building huge colony ships to rush out to the stars when we were colonizing our solar system. That obviously didn't go too well for us, given the post-apocalyptic nature of the story, and, you know, and the narrative of Destiny. But as Guardians, we are looking to reclaim everything that we've lost. So when you go into old Russia, you really see the old technology from the Golden Age, and the fact that it's decaying and it's, you know, in ruin. It's been reclaimed by nature. So even though, you know, the fate of our civilization had been doomed, it's still, you know, nature, nature is ascendant over man. So it can still be a beautiful place. It can still be a world worthy of exploration, a world worthy of heroes. Uh, and I can tell you, I still get lost in old Russia. You know, some of the game designers who spend more time playing the game than I do, you know, when I'm not head down over Facebook or Twitter, uh, still get lost in old Russia or discover new things that they had yet to find. You know, like some boss that's just secreted away in a cave somewhere who you're not going to have the strength to kill in the Alpha. You're going to have to come back later after you've completed some other activities, some other strikes or missions that we're holding back for the final version of the game. So like I said, the Alpha really is sort of your first step into the world of Destiny. We'll give you a beginning experience as to what it's like to build a character, but there's only so much you can level up because we don't want this to spoil anyone's experience in playing the beta or, of course, the final release of the game in September. Awesome. So that alpha is going to kick off this Thursday on PS4. If you've got a PS4, you can head to greatnessawaits.com slash destiny, register for a chance to get in. I want to zero in a little bit, though, on something else that Destiny offers, and you'll get a taste of it in the alpha, is this, there's just loot, there's equipment, there's weapons. I mean, it's yeah. not just sort of this static, here are the nine guns of the game. There oh. is a vast arsenal a in Destiny. A vast arsenal. And we're giving you, again, a sampling of that vast arsenal. But you'll be able to go to the tower, and you'll be able to browse the different merchants and vendors they have there. So there are gunsmiths. You know, there are different faction vendors who have their own line of weapons. You can gain reputation by some of these different story agents by completing their side missions and gaining favor with them so that they'll unlock different portions of their product line to you. So the weapons that you carry, the gear that you wear, will indicate the allegiances that you've sworn to different political factions in the universe. Uh, it'll indicate which activities that you've taken a shine to. So you'll be able to look at somebody and say, this guy has played the strikes on every level of difficulty. He's got strike gear, he's got strike weapons, that helmet is clearly from my favorite strike, or they may be a competitive multiplayer guy, you know, so they got the arena gear. Uh, you'll be able to tell at a glance what someone likes and what they're good at, which will lead to some of those interesting social connections. If I look at somebody and I say, you are clearly a competitive multiplayer guy, you should think about joining my clan. We like players like you. 
Another group might say, we're all about raids. We're all about cooperative, tactical, story-driven gameplay, where we're taking down the toughest bosses in the game. And they're going to choose the people that get to join them and play with them based on what they've invested in in terms of their own character, the things that they've chosen to play. Outstanding. So Destiny Alpha, it's going to be out on Thursday on PS4. Go to greatnessawaits.com slash destiny. Register for a chance to get in. That is it for us on Destiny. Stay tuned. We're going to have Battlefield Hardline coming up next. PlayStation.